on board. Half doors, doors, hatches are closed. Roger, starting up. Batteries on. Voltage normal. Tape recorder on. Functioning. Intercom readability. Good. Intercom readability. Good. Intercom readability. Good. Collective brake. Off. Lock and stop system. On and operational. Control stick and pedals neutral. Hey guys. Welcome to mission 5 of the DCS MI8 oil fields campaign. In this campaign, you're flying a civilian helicopter, you're working in the oil fields near Makop, and there's a variety of different kinds of tasks that you'll be given to do. A lot of it is transporting people to and from and around different places in the area. So there's some sling loading, a lot of heavy cargo, and it's been an interesting one so far. Now, we're starting at mission five because the first couple, the first two missions were familiarization flights or fan flights. Just getting used to the area, nothing significant happens. And then missions three and four were more interesting and I wanted to share them, but they the recordings got corrupted, so I wasn't able to. So this is the first one I've been able to successfully record and share with you, and I'm hoping that it's interesting enough. So in this one, we fly over to the sub base, we take off here from Makop Airfield and fly a couple kilometers down the road to a sub base. And we'll pick up a geologist and his crew there, and plus all of their gear, so a couple tons of weight. And we'll fly out to one of the oil rig sites. From there, he's going to give us some instructions, some visual landscapes or land uh, marks to follow. And we'll take him out to an oil rig somewhere out in a clearing. The oil rig, uh, the clearing there is fairly small. The landing's a little bit tight. It's kind of a neat thing. And once he's done his thing there, we'll head back to the sub base. And that's pretty much the mission couple of stops. Uh, total mission time was an hour and 20 minutes. But something I wanted to point out about this campaign has been the attention to detail. You might notice during the startup that the crew is calling out things as I turn them on. So they're calling out the um, anti-collision lights and they're calling out uh, the starter and everything else as I'm doing it. And I think that's really cool. I've never seen that in a mission before. And I wish I could have it in all the missions, or all the MI-8 flights, because it's pretty cool. It really adds a lot to the experience, I think. So anyway, there's no sling loading in this mission. There was in the previous one, and I'm assuming there will be more in future missions. So hopefully we'll get to do some of that again soon. But for this one, it's just some, uh, some basic navigation, a couple of tons of cargo and then some visual navigation as well, which is new for this campaign. That's something that I haven't had to do yet. So far, all my flight plans have been known. This will be the first one where it's not. So we are just about done here with startup. We're starting up the left engine, and I guess we're going to hop back into the cockpit here, and we're going to take off in a couple of minutes. So I hope you enjoy the mission. Alright, so we'll do a short rolling takeoff here. We get moving forward. Flying a fair amount of forward cyclic here to get moving. Then once we get to the skid marks here on the runway, we'll recenter our cyclic and add some collective. And up we go. We don't weigh anything, so we just kind of pop right up right now. I actually added a uh, collective a little too quickly there. That could have been done a little more gently. But let's come around. Just like I was saying before, there's that road just off the side of the taxiway. I'm just going to follow that over to the sub base. Yeah. 
Alright, so that implies our mission length is about an hour. And there in the background you can hear some live ATC traffic. It's pre-recorded, but this is part of the mission, it's not something I'm playing on my computer. I think it's a really nice attention to detail, you have some radio chatter going on in the background the whole time. Alright, so there's a, there's a halo down there we don't want to get in the way of. So we're not going to come in on the ideal heading of 040. We're going to come in around here a little bit, more like 075. Try to stay out of the way of his rotors. Stay well clear of him. We're down. So we're picking up. Oh, there goes the halo. You know, I would love to fly that in DCS one day. Have a flyable halo module. As far as I know, it's quite similar to the MI-8, just bigger. Considerably bigger. We've got our passengers. We're going 174 for 47. So we're going to come in here and set that. 174. We've got our Doppler nav right here. Good old analog drum rather than a nice digital input like we have in some of the newer things. One seven four. We are going 47. It's 
we roll this backwards to 47, and it will tick forward to zero. You count down the distance remaining. The other option is to have it tick, have leave it at zero, and then wait till it counts up to 47. But this way, we have a good reminder of how far we have left to travel. And up here, this will tell us our drift angle as we're flying, whether we're drifting to the right or to the left of the intended course. And then don't forget to turn it on, or it does absolutely nothing. Hop back to the pilot commander seat and turn 174 after takeoff. So our ideal takeoff vector would be just over there. But I don't really want to get close to those power lines. So maybe we'll take off over the buildings. Let go of our brake roll a bit. Actually, this will be pretty alright here, I think. We're mostly trimmed for takeoff. There we go. A little bit of drift, but not terrible. There we go. Okay. Oh. Well above the buildings here and then start building up some forward speed. Alright, now let's turn to our heading of 147. Sorry, 174. Right around here. Sometimes just getting this helicopter trimmed for forward level flight can be time consuming. Just because of the way consumer product, consumer joystick products work versus the way a hydraulic cyclic would work in a real helicopter. The difference being you let go of the cyclic in a helicopter, in real life it just stays put. There's no need to trim, it just stays where it is. The consumer joysticks, they all snap back to center. And so you kind of have to trim by telling the stick where the center is. So once you've found your position, you say this is the new center, and then return your joystick back to its physical center. You can kind of see that now in the controls indicator in the top left there, where that diamond is up and to the right of the center point. My physical joystick is centered right now. So the logical center is up and to the right, so I don't have to hold my joystick there. Now, in this bird, we do have autopilot. We have a roll and pitch hold, we have a yaw hold, and we have an altitude hold. In theory, that should follow the curve of the ground. It's based on radar altimeter. So as, there, as we go up this hill here, the bird should climb and try to maintain a pretty steady 95 to 100 feet over the ground. Meters, sorry, not feet. Symmetric bird. But I don't always completely trust it. 
had issues with the altitude hold turning itself off and the bird suddenly entering a dive. I'm going to gain a little altitude. I don't really want to be this close to the trees. The other thing is the altitude hold typically won't engage properly unless you've got your vertical velocity here, right there, near zero. So you're neither climbing nor falling. Alright, so let's hop over to the pilot navigator seat and see how we're doing for our course. Look at our Doppler nav. We've got 32, 31 and a half kilometers remaining to go. And we have drifted two kilometers to the right, and we're continuing to drift to the right. So we need to come left. Add a little bit of left bank. And what we should see is that drift angle start to reduce. move pretty slowly when we're this far out still. And we've lost our altitude hold, so we'll turn that back on. Our drift angle is staying pretty consistent right now, so we need no, it's still drifting to the right, so we're going to have to come left more. And we should be reducing, yep, there it goes. We are reducing our drift angle back towards zero. 25 kilometers left to go. We'll hop back to the pilot commander's seat and maybe enjoy the view for a bit. At this point, once you're kind of on course, this bird is largely hands-off. over that hill. Two. Oh, that, that's it right down there. That's the one. Circle around the site, lead some altitude, lead some speed. Figure out our best approach, make sure we identify our landing zone. So far the landing zones have been marked by a set of four tires with little flags in them. You can see that just off to the right of the building down there. Now we just need to come in from 040. I'm going to hop back over to pilot commander's seat. 
more accustomed to flying here. Alright, time to bleed off some speed. We're going to go around one more time. We've let off enough speed, but we do need to bleed off more altitude. careful about doing that at low speeds. We've got a lot of weight on board. And we will enter VRS rather rapidly if we allow our descent rate to climb too much. Or to fall too much, I should say. So far, so good. tires. down. A little bit of rolling, but... I'm not super thrilled about the rolling, but that's okay. We're still here. Alright, so we're waiting a couple of minutes here for them to talk and figure things out. And... Okay, 283 for 6. Just going to grab a, a screenshot here. 283 for 6, so we'll hop over here. And we'll set in 283. Set a drift angle back to zero. All right, two eight three for six. Now I guess our best bet is to take off kind of that way into the wind zero four zero. Ooh, all right, a little bit of wobbling. 
And I need to retrim this helicopter. I'm going to crash. Because I can't. Ooh, okay. Hold on. All right. So <laughs> what happened there was a trim error. My rudder trim, my anti-torque trim, was so far to the left that even with full right anti-torque pedal, I could not counter the rotation from the main disc. And that's why you saw me spinning around to the left there. So I pulled a quick trim reset, and that reset my anti-torque trim, and I managed to recover, but that should have been something I checked before I took off. I should have reset my trim. Alright, so we're up, so now we're resuming course to a three for six. Rookie mistake. Now we're not flying too far this time. We're going to hop over to pilot nav. Have a look. We are drifting a bit to the right. left. We've got five kilometers to go. In theory, I could probably just fly the entire mission from the right seat, and that would make a lot of sense, but I'm used to flying it from the left seat, and flying from here just looks weird. Anyway, we're basically tracking on course now. Come back to our heading of 283, and we're going a little further, not much. Two kilometers. This should be interesting, because I don't know if there will be a visible landmark, or if we'll just be landing in some clearing somewhere. This is Norway Fogging. Now turning north along the road, another two, three kilometers. Reach a small village with a tall mosque. And to its left, there is a forested area that we need. Roger. The eastern producer will here, too. Right beyond the forest, there is the forest settlement. And farther down is the All right, so we're following the road north. And there should be a village with a tall mosque. So this campaign has had me do a little bit of every kind of navigation now so far. We did some radio nav earlier on. We do a lot of um, a lot of the Doppler nav with headings, and now we're doing some visual nav following a road looking for certain landmarks. this be the place? Or am I following it that way through the forest? I 
guess we'll follow it this way and hope for the best, right? Two hours later. I'm following the road, but I feel like I've gone more than three kilometers and I haven't seen a mosque. I'm still going north. Or fairly close, north would be over there. Perhaps this is it. I do see a tower over there. Wonder if that's where we're headed. Let's go fly over to that tower. See if we can trigger anything. That's interesting out there. people down there. Like it's definitely something that's placed by the mission editor. wonder if this is the area they were talking about over here. gone much farther than what I was told, so maybe we'll turn back. Alright, so what happens here is I followed the wrong road. If you look at the bottom right, that's the oil rig where I started, and I followed the green line to Novi, Novi Polyani, and then there are two roads that head north, and I followed the red one and not the green one. Ideally, I should have followed the green one, and I imagine there would have been a trigger at some point telling me to turn left and, and go find the clearing. But since I took the road to the right, I never triggered that message, and I just kept following the road until I decided, okay, I've gone too far. And then I started turning in and looking around for something that looked like it was placed by the mission editor, and I ended up way over there. So at this point, I decided, all right, I'm going to pull up the map and try to get my bearings and figure out where I am. Luckily for me, I was only a few kilometers off course, and so after a quick heading adjustment, it wasn't long before I found the clearing. Thank 
Alright, so I had a look at the F-10 map, figured out that I was a little off course, I believe I followed the wrong road, but I was only about three kilometers away from where I was supposed to be. So now we're looking for <clears throat> an oil pump for the drop-off. Here's the large clearing I'm assuming he's talking about. seeing any oil pump around here. Maybe over there. Oh, that could be it there. That would be it. Okay, well, it looks like we're going in here. circle around, come in from the direction we were going, which was 040. This one will be interesting. We really don't want to hit those trees. We don't have a whole ton of room otherwise, so we need to kind of make our way over there. And then almost lower straight down. It's very vertical landing. I don't want to rush these treetops. One of the fun things about the MI-8 is just how far forward you sit and how big the bird really is. Your ass end hangs out quite a bit. And hop back to this seat where I'm more comfortable landing. Out for VRS. All right, and we just kind of bring her down now. Need to get eyes on that oil rig. There it is. That's my point of reference. And we just come down nice and slow. Two to three meters per second is sort of our sweet spot. If we go beyond that, we really risk BRS. Right, we can come left now. And as we oh, we're getting a little bit fast there. As we approach the ground, we'll reduce that to one to two. and then we just kind of come down at about one meter per second. And then in ground effect, we get a bit of extra lift. And we're just about down. There we go. Throttle down, break. Or collective down, break. All right, we're here. <clears throat> Once you're on the ground, it seemed like such a big area. Like, how could I have any difficulty at all getting in here? I'm nowhere near the trees, but from above, especially with the visibility you have below you, you can see what I mean about how far forward you sit and just how, how far back the helicopter goes. 
It'd be pretty easy to think you're well clear of the trees and then come down too soon and strike your tail rotor. Well, that's neat. I didn't know there was an oil rig model in the game. Like most of the other static models, it doesn't look great. But that's fine. Alright, so our next destination is back to the sub base. So we are headed 013 for 40 kilometers. And that'll take us home. So we're going to be doing a basically straight vertical takeoff. One of the things we want to make sure we do when we're in the dirt here is make sure that nose wheel comes up first, like that. a little too much, but if we don't lift the nose wheel first, what tends to happen is it gets caught and it drags and you can tip your helicopter over. Anyways, we're just going to come straight up, a little bit of collective, slowly climb. There isn't really space here to safely pick up forward airspeed. Pretty much just have to come straight up. All right, our heading is 1-3, just about on already. And we're going 40 kilometers. So now that we're up above the trees, we can start picking up some airspeed. All right, so sub base is just ahead. I'm assuming that'll be the end of the mission. Overall, fairly uneventful. The first time I've had to fly based on just given verbal directions rather than a, a known heading and distance. And as usual with that kind of thing, I tend to struggle with it. Mostly because I think in real life you could ask at any given time, is this the right road or is this the right place or could you repeat what you said? In these mission editors you get one chance and if the description isn't clear enough or something's ambiguous or you forget what they said, unless you took a screenshot you can't see it again. And you can't ask for clarification. So in my case there were a couple of different roads, I think I followed the wrong one. And I ended up having to use the F-10 map to sort of figure out where's the nearest point of interest to where I am and head over there. And I wasn't far off, but I don't think I would have found it just on my own. So anyway, here we are. Let's uh, descend a bit more, bleed off some speed. Alright, we've 
killed most of our speed. So again, the trick is to stay out of ERS. We're still too high. That's kind of the problem here. Because I did not kill enough altitude while I was still moving. So now I have to do this slow vertical descent. almost no forward airspeed. And that's dangerous. You really want to have that forward airspeed when you're descending, if you can, because it's that much safer. Anyway, looks like we're okay. We're going to come in, land at the second pad like we did before. I was saying earlier, because of how far forward you sit and how big this bird is, you really have to fly further forward than what you think is necessary. We arrived. A little bit sketchy, but we're down. Unloading. And we're done. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for watching. That was mission five. So we'll be back with mission six in another video.